Imagine the scene. It's the mid-1940s and Hollywood is a buzz with the news that the master of suspense, Alfred Hitchcock, is teaming up with none other than Salvador Dali, the eccentric surrealist painter known for melting clocks and dreamlike landscapes. The result? A mind-bending, visually stunning dream sequence in the 1945 film Spellbound. This collaboration, as bizarre and brilliant as it sounds, would go down in history as one of the most fascinating crossovers between cinema and surrealist art. And in today's video, we're going to explore all about it. Spellbound tells the story of Dr. Constance Peterson, played by Ingrid Bergman, a psychiatrist who falls in love with Dr. Anthony Edwards, played by Gregory Peck a man suffering from amnesia and accused of murder. To uncover the truth, Peterson delves into Edward's subconscious, leading to the now famous dream sequence designed by Dali. The birth of a collaboration. With positive experiences with Freudian psychoanalysis and therapy, the producer of the film, David O. Selznick, wanted to create a film promoting it, when Hitchcock took interest in buying the film rights to the source material novel, The House of Dr. Edwards, the idea for this unique artistic partnership sparked. Hitchcock always wanted to push boundaries and experiment with visuals, believed that Dali's surrealist style would be perfect for the dream sequences in the psychological thriller, saying, I wanted Dali because of the architectural sharpness of his work. Rather than the traditional, cliched, blurred Hollywood dream sequences, Hitchcock did to convey the dream with great visual sharpness and clarity, sharper than the film itself. In turn, subverting a traditional dream sequence that's normally viewed under hazy visions. Dali, an artist whose work is soaked in themes of psychoanalysis, jumped at the collaboration, describing it as a story taking place in a Freudian world. Even with Dali's enthusiasm, commissioning him wasn't without its doubts, with initial pushback of producer Selznick, who only agreed to Dali for the proposed publicity spike and interest. Dali, not a stranger to the film world at this point, had already written and starred in Louis Buñuel's avant-garde classic Un Chien en Deloup, also with an infamous eyeball scene, reminiscent of Spellbounds, as well as co-writing L'Age d'Or. Dali was never one to shy away from the unusual, and was intrigued by the opportunity to bring his surreal visions to life on the big screen. A dream sequence like no other. The dream sequence in Spellbound was originally conceived as a 20 minute segment, was intended to be a surreal journey through Edward's psyche. In the sequence, we see a series of bizarre and unsettling images, foretelling the truth and the character's mindset. For example, the numerous eyes on the curtains, symbolise paranoia and the feeling of being constantly watched or analysed. There's faceless figures, representing the loss of identity and the fragmented nature of Edward's memory. There's a rock silhouette of a face, which mirrors Dali's iconic sleep painting, both faces embodying the dream state and referencing its fragility. The scissors separate what we can see from what we can remember, and the falling man symbolises a fear of failure, loss of control, or death. Where he is being chased by the shadows of wings, it shows he's running away from his freedom, the shadows of his past, perhaps he sees himself as prey. I won't spoil the movie as all these symbols link to the unresolved murder, so you'll have to watch to find the true meanings behind them. From 20 to 2 Dolly and Hitchcock originally came up with an elaborate and unsurprisingly surreal 20 minute long dream sequence. Unfortunately, the full glory of Dali's vision never made it to the final cut, with Selznick cutting the footage 
deeming the scene to be too long and complex. The dream sequence was drastically trimmed down from 20 minutes to just two, with the full scene now considered lost footage. With Hitchcock stating in 62, Dali had some strange ideas he wanted a statue to crack like a shell falling apart, with ants crawling all over it, and underneath there would be Ingrid Bergman covered by the ants. It just wasn't possible. My idea was to shoot the Dali dream scenes in the open air so that the whole thing, photographed in real sunshine, would be terribly sharp. I was very keen on that idea, but the producers were concerned about the expense. So we shot the dream in the studios. Originally taking place in a gambling house, then on a rooftop in a forest-like setting, there were many scenes that were cut or n were never filmed. One featured Bergman playing the goddess Diana in a ballroom with piano suspended from the ceiling. Images exist of Bergman in a draped costume like a work of classical sculpture. According to the book, Dali, Surrealism and Cinema, the Surrealist wanted to hang 15 grand pianos from the ceiling of a ballroom to replicate a nightmarish sensation. Studio interference, primarily by Selznick and his team, caused this vision to be replaced with miniature pianos and about 40 people of short stature, asking them to use forced perspective. Neither Hitchcock nor Dali gave their approval on this decision, and the scene was not shot. Even actress Ingrid Bergman also believed the original sequence was more effective, saying, It was something to put into a museum. The final film did not include the complicated footage in which I became a plaster statue in the man's dream, which meant we shot the film backward with me breaking out of it. There were so many wonderful things in it, it was such a pity it could have been really sensational. Despite this, Selznick would eventually bring in a production designer, William Cameron Menzies, to direct the sequence while Hitchcock was away, as he became increasingly concerned about the scene production, so concerned with the outcome, he was actually seeking legal counsel to see if the artist Dali could sue based on what they did to his work. The reasons for the extreme cut were multifaceted, studio pressures, concerns about pacing, and the belief that audiences might find the prolonged surrealism too bewildering. Hitchcock lamented this decision, feeling that the sequence lost much of its intended impact along with many others. Dali himself uncharacteristically rarely referenced the film after completion, with the only documented comments said about the movie being that the best parts of the film got cut. The Legacy Regardless of its drama, Spellbound was a very well-received film, grossing over six million in profits, rave reviews and array of Academy nominations including Best Special Effects. Although Hitchcock didn't share the same enthusiasm, calling his work just another manhunt story wrapped up in pseudo-psychoanalysis. Despite his self-scrutiny, Spellbound was a stepping stone of Hitchcock's future film heights and is now considered Hitchcock's first film in what's touted as the so-called Freudian trilogy, the other two being Psycho and Marnie. Despite the truncated sequence, the collaboration between Hitchcock and Dali remains iconic, however little it resembled their original plans. Over the years, film historians and art critics alike have marvelled at the audacity and creativity of their joint venture. With a resurgence in interest, Munich recently held an exhibition which brought together art and film enthusiasts to celebrate the unique partnership. The exhibition featured original drawings and paintings by Dali, as well as rare behind-the-scenes photographs of the set design, process and sculptures used. The show featured visual effects, holograms, and sound effects, as well as a metaverse in which visitors wearing reality goggles can dive into and move about inside Dali's fantastic surrealistic dream world, giving visitors a real immersive experience of the feverish dream sequence. A match made in surrealist heaven. 
The collaboration between Salvador Dali and Alfred Hitchcock stands as a testament to the power of artistic vision and the magic that can happen when different mediums collide, as well as a reminder to allow artistic freedom. While we can only dream of what was left on the cutting board, the fragments that remain of this nightmarish dream sequence continue to captivate and have inspired many films since such as Fellini's Eight and a Half, Bergman's Wild Strawberries, and anime thriller Paprika, and even Inception. So next time you watch Spellbound, take a moment to appreciate the surreal genius behind those fleeting scenes, and remember that in the world of cinema and art, sometimes the dreams that come to life are the ones we never forget. Or, in the words of Dali, the best cinema is the kind that can be perceived with your eyes closed. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked this video and would like to see more video essays just like this one, don't forget to like and subscribe and let me know your thoughts in the comments below.